Here's another thing that those who teach a pre-tribulation rapture cite as evidence of the rapture occurring before the seven year tribulation period begins. The book of Revelation has 22 chapters. The church is mentioned 19 times in the first three chapters and then never mentioned again. This is because the church isn't present for the events that are described in the book of Revelation. Revelation follows a regular sequence of events. When we come to the end of the tribulation period described in the book of Revelation, there's no mention of a rapture, like you would expect if it were to occur at the end of the tribulation. The Greek word for church is ekklesia, which literally means the called out ones. It's the correct word to use when we think about a local assembly of Christians. Ekklesia in both its plural and singular form is used 18 times in the first three chapters of the book of Revelation and once in the last chapter. Up to the end of chapter 3, the word for church is almost always used to refer to seven literal assemblies of called out ones that existed in seven different cities in the geographic area of what we now know as the country of Turkey. After chapter 3, another Greek word is used. That word is hagios, meaning holy ones. Hagios normally is translated as the word saints. Hagias is the common way throughout the entire New Testament to refer to believers when they aren't necessarily being referred to as a formally recognized assembly. The church is referred to in this way prior to the book of Revelation in the New Testament 50 times by my count. Paul regularly addressed his letters to the saints in different locations. If we're going to make a blanket statement that the saints spoken of in Revelation do not make up the church, then we need to make the same statement about the saints in the rest of the New Testament. Who then was Paul talking about when he referred to the saints instead of the church? Well, essentially, the words saints and church are synonymous and interchangeable. Instead of making such blanket statements about word usage, what actually needs to occur is that a careful study needs to be conducted each time the word agios appears in Revelation to determine who that word is referring to in context each time it's used. And when you take the time to do this, it's always referring to those individuals who make up the church. The book of Revelation, for the most part, does follow a sequence of events that take place over time. However, that's not always true. For example, the Apostle John, who wrote the book of Revelation, is told to prophesy again at the end of chapter 10. What follows in chapters 11 through 14 are further details about time periods that have already been discussed, as well as big picture panoramas of what's contained in God's plan. The sequence of events then picks back up in chapter 15, only to be interrupted again in chapter 17. Because of these overlays you find in Revelation, you find the church being referred to as the saints, among other terms, found throughout the entire book of Revelation. The church is referred to in other ways in Revelation. In chapter 7 and 19, the church is referred to as a great multitude in heaven. In chapter 7, it's just after the rapture occurs. In chapter 19, the church is also referred to as the bride or wife of Christ. And in chapter 12, the church is referred to as the ones who have the testimony of Jesus Christ. What we don't ever find in Revelation is the church being present for any of the day of the Lord judgments that are poured out on the earth. We know from several scriptures in the New Testament that the church is not destined to suffer God's wrath. That's part of our great hope. Those day of the Lord judgments are found in chapters 8 through 10, 15 through 16, and chapter 19 of Revelation. If we want to be silly and apply this use of word principle evenly to the book of Revelation, we see that Jesus isn't always referred to by his own name in Revelation. He's called the Lamb, the Bridegroom, Faithful and True, and the Son of Man. Other places, he's identified only by his physical attributes. Is it possible that all those guys are not Jesus? Like the words used for church, only a close examination of each scripture can say for sure. This argument for the pre-tribulation rapture is dependent on a really poor set of hermeneutics, the rules for interpreting the Bible.
It's also based on a type of logic that starts with a presupposition. In this case, that presupposition is that the pre-tribulation rapture is true. Rather than allowing scripture to provide truth, this so-called truth is being read into the scripture. This argument in favor of the pre-tribulation rapture is solidly debunked.